Now, today is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Day. So what's it like living with the condition from day to day? For some people, there are no obvious external signs that they have MS, yet these invisible symptoms greatly affect their lives. You can appear fine and be in constant pain at the same time. Sometimes my skin is so sensitive that my body feels like it's on fire or like someone is poking me with hot needles. Or you can feel like insects are crawling all over you. Joining us now is the CEO of MS Australia, Deirdre McKechnie, and Astrid Edwards, who lives with MS and is a national advocate with the organisation. Good morning to both of you, Astrid, Deirdre. Mm. Tell us about when you were first diagnosed. Uh, good morning. Um, first diagnosed about six years ago. Um, I woke up one morning uh, quite violently and my feet were on fire. Um, an experience I had never had before, um, although unfortunately had quite a bit since. Um, over the next eight years, um, uh, the fire, the pins and needles, numbness, tingling, um, ascended pretty much to my breasts. Uh, and uh, after an emergency MRI, it was determined that I have multiple sclerosis. How long did it take to get a diagnosis? This is a very important part of the whole MS process, is just how tricky and difficult it is to get a diagnosis. And I think it's fair to say it's often not speedy. Uh, I'm a relatively unusual case. Uh, mine was done in a couple of weeks. Um, right, that is okay. very rare, yeah. um, and that was because of the um, the, um, the extraordinary, extraordinary nature of my symptoms. The severity um, of them, yeah. I probably had MS for at least a year, maybe um, many years, if you look at my um, condition, so it's hard to tell. Deirdre, do people understand MS as much as they should? Absolutely not. I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting disease. They often refer to it as the snowflake disease in that every person's experience is quite individual and quite different. Yeah. And that can be really challenging because it's hard to explain to people what it's like living with multiple sclerosis when everyone's experience is very different. And the symptoms are often invisible. The symptoms are very often invisible. And so Frequently they will hear the expression, but you look so well, you seem to be fine, yeah. when on the inside they're actually experiencing a, a range of conditions. But the de disease itself is pretty specific. It's lesions on the brain. Mm. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so it, it, it's an autoimmune disease where basically the body attacks itself and creates lesions on the central nervous system, so the brain, the spinal cord and the optic nerves. And that's what actually causes the symptoms is that there is breakdown in the connectivity of the messaging that goes back and forth. And so it manifests in a whole range of symptoms mm. throughout the body, but the lesions occur in the central nervous system. Astrid, what's it like being told? I, I just can't imagine if, if you're being told there's something, you know, fundamentally flawed or wrong or diseased about your heart or about your brain, the fundamentals, you, you, you must have a very strong response to that. Uh, you do, I did, certainly. Um, uh, I knew I was ill. Um, and my mother flew down from Sydney um, and we knew something, we were going to get a diagnosis of some sort. It was quite traumatic. Um, I didn't take the first year very well. And of course, living with multiple sclerosis, living with any kind of chronic illness, um, you don't just get over it, it takes a long time. And in addition to the physical uh, symptoms that you're experiencing, you also, you know, there's an emotional reaction, a psychological reaction to what does this mean for the rest there's of my life. There's a process of acceptance, I would imagine. There is a process and it takes a long time. Um, and you know, you go back and forth. After six years, I still learning. Why, why have you decided to be an advocate? I guess there are two paths you can take. You can mm. try and just get on with things and be very private about it or act on, the, on behalf of others as you are. I tried to be private about it and um, it made me really uncomfortable. I felt like I was, this is my experience, I felt like I was lying to people and also um, I found myself in situations where I, I wasn't being honest and people didn't understand that I really needed help. Um, so that's my way of dealing with it. Um, I found it, it's, it's good for my mental health, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, uh, but otherwise, um, I would encourage people to talk about it um, because it, 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 it takes the stress away from what is a 100% uncertain condition. Yeah. Look, it, it's very tricky because we hear often the, uh, the condition of MS, and I understand there are a number of them, but the most common one is the, the relapsing remitting. Mm -hmm. What does that actually mean? Um, in the, when you have the full-blown symptoms, I guess you're in a bad place. But when you don't, are you absolutely fine? No. Um, so I was diagnosed six years ago, have had about five relapses since, and in those relapses, uh, they've all been different. I never know what, really? what to expect. Right. All five have been quite different. Um, I often end up in hospital for kind of 12 hours and then no one knows what to do with me and sends me home. Um, uh, but 
from day to day, I do have various symptoms that you can't see, you know, people at home won't be able to see. Um, uh, a story that um, I now find funny, but I did not find at the time was, um, I was walking home wearing sensible flat shoes um, a couple of months ago, and suddenly my foot didn't work. And it's called drop foot, and suddenly I couldn't mm. just, I couldn't walk. Um, and I broke my toe because I didn't know where the ground was. Yeah. Um, who, who breaks their foot? A brace of toe walking home. Walking along in flat shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what is the treatment like? I believe you, uh, you've uh, learned to uh, build in rest days because you're still uh, very active uh, professionally and, and you have to shed schedule in that rest time. I, I work, work full time and that is one of the myths about MS and other invisible diseases. People, people assume that we can't do anything or we um, work at a reduced capacity. Yeah. Um, that doesn't have to be true and it's not true. Uh, but I do have to manage my condition. I um, uh, do schedule in rest days and I do schedule in uh, work from home days. and. Uh, I spent many years not being employed because people are scared of the stigma surrounding MS. Um, yeah. And I'm very proud to say that RMIT University now employs me. Beautiful very employer. Good. Well that's, done. That's good to hear. Deirdre, just finally on World MS Day, what would you like everyone watching this morning who, who's not directly affected by it to know and to do? I think it's really important for them to, to just increase the awareness to, to I guess, realise that people don't know what someone is going through and to be aware that they might be experiencing difficulties that perhaps they can help with. Mm. But really importantly to think about some of the things that Astrid just said then. People with MS are diagnosed, 75% are women, they're usually around the age of 30. So they're right in the prime of their life. They've yeah. got so much they can offer. They're kick-starting their careers. They're thinking about having families. And we want people to realise they can still do all those sorts of things. It's, it is a difficult disease, but there is really good treatment out there and they can live a really full and productive life, just like Astrid is and doing. You, and just finally, Astrid, you're writing a book, I believe, uh, on the side of everything else you're doing. <laughs> doing many things. I do teach writing, so um, yeah. yeah, writing is my friend. Good luck. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you're not slowing down. Thank great, you very much. Great, so nice to meet you both. Go well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. World MS Day. So uh, bear that in mind, particularly if you're watching us this morning thinking, actually, I do know someone who mm. has MS. Uh, pick up the phone. Give them a call.